Lagos, situated in the southwestern part of Nigeria, is the largest capital in the country. A melting pot for all, a city like none in Nigeria. So has its history not been like any other in the country. From its inception in 1861 as a British colony, Lagos had always been the commercial capital of Nigeria and was Nigeria's political capital till its movement to the federal capital territory to Abuja in 1990. That notwithstanding, Lagos remains the nerve center of the country. From politics to commerce, Lagos has always been the playground of politicians and businessmen, but lately a playground, no pun intended, it has been for one man. The great Lagos that we all knew, a city of dreams and hope, a place where fairness and equity is the watchword, is no longer that Lagos of our dreams. Rather, it has become a mystery how just one man can play the masquerade and the masquerader in a macabre dance, taking the populace nowhere but misery, poverty, and doom, and yet he smiles to the banks, enjoying all the trappings of wealth. Who is this one man that is all so powerful to hold down the collective dreams of all? At various times in his questionable and weird past, he could have been known by numerous names and subjects, like Yekini Amoda Ogunleri, Hamid Shangodele, Adekunle Tunubu, or Bobo Chicago. But he is known and addressed today as Ashiwaju Senator Bola Ahmed Tunubu, the Jagaban of Bogo Kingdom, a former senator representing the Lagos West Senatorial District former governor of Lagos State on the platform of the Alliance of Democracy, AD, and current national leader of the All Progressive Congress, APC. With an enviable CV, it is best to deconstruct the real man, Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tunubu, in order to unravel the facet he has been able to successfully build with time, using several cronings and accomplices. The story of Bola Tinubu can best suit that of an Arabian night tale, a modern-day Alibaba and the Forty Thieves. But you will all be the judge at the end of this film as we unmask the real Tinubu, the infamous lion of Bodila, the Jagoban Bogu, who arguably is the biggest landlord in Nigeria. The real enemy is the man who stole the city hall. The enemy is a refugee upstart who sees the local government secretariat at Global Road in Ikoi. Our collective enemy is the greedy man who bought the whole nurse's house at Falomo, the Falomo shopping complex, the Lagos State Polytechnic property at Dojota, the stretches of acres at Neki, the whole Strava yard in Alausa, the innumerable beach front properties long owned by the people of Lagos State, the billion naira Queen's Drive mansion, the illegal lucky toll gate, the First Nation airline, the strings of media conglomerates, the vault and garden symmetry, even the symmetry. Based on mounties of sustained petitions and indictment for alleged corrupt enrichment while in and out of office, Tinubu is maybe the most indicted governor in the history of Lagos State since its creation in 1967. Like every other story, we will start from the beginning. To start with, it is no secret that Tinubu is a native of Iragbiji, a hilly rural town situated three kilometers away from Ikirun in Oshun State. Bola Ahmed Adekunle Tinubu is said to have been born on the 29th of March, 1952, in the city of Lagos. He attended St. John's Primary School, Aruloya, Lagos, and Children's Home School in Ibadan. Tinubu went to the United States in 1975, where he studied first at Richard J. Daly College in Chicago, Illinois, and then at Chicago State University. He graduated in 1979 with a Bachelor of Science degree in accounting. Even Wikipedia is silent on Tinubu's attendance of Government College, Ibadan. Such is the web of lies and deceit that makes the man more odious and dangerous to those who can see beyond the mask. Today, Lagos has its debt crisis, a taxation crisis, 
an educational crisis, an environmental crisis, an infrastructure crisis, a burden placed by Tinubu as governor of Lagos State, and further deepened astronomical heights under his godson, the incumbent governor, Babatunde Fashola, in a perfectly laid out wheel of corruption. His political career began in 1992 when he was elected to the Nigerian Senate representing the Lagos West constituency in the short-lived Nigerian Third Republic. In the run-up to the 1999 elections, Bola Tinubu was protege of the Alliance of Democracy leaders Abraham Adesanya and Ayo Adebanjo. He won the AD primaries for Lagos State gubernatorial elections in competition with Funsho Williams and Wahab Dosumu, a former minister of Works and Housing. The rest is history. He won and became governor of Lagos. When he assumed office in May 1999, little did Lagos know that they had just entered what is traditionally called one chance, a journey to nowhere. As he took his oath and addressed the good people of Lagos who voted him, Bola Ahmed Tunubu promised 10,000 housing units for the poor, a promise he did not fulfill. Senator Bola Ahmed Tunubu has become a personification of what is wrong with Lagos. Just as his word is law, he can do and undo. What started out like an act of drama at the beginning of the current democratic dispensation in 1991 has left Nigeria's premier state, Lagos, as a mere fiefdom of Tinubu who bears the titular toga of the Lion of Bodilon. Considering his grip on Lagos, Tinubu dispenses the power and authority of an emperor. He possesses the trappings of a Sicilian-type robber baron or a Roman emperor foisted on the Yoruba nation. Ever since his inglorious eight years rule as a governor of Lagos State from 1999 to 2007, on the platform of the Alliance of Democracy, AD, to date, he has been accused of being the looter in chief who has unleashed the most egregious corruption and reckless looting on the treasury of Lagos State. Even as he hides under the guise of championing democratic principles, various frauds, including financial crimes, have been linked to him such that he can only be summed up as a perpetrator of diabolical deeds. Tinubu's dubious activities came to the office for quite early during his tenure as Lagos governor. After just being sworn in in 1999, the late legal luminary and human rights lawyer, Chief Ghani Fawaemi, instituted legal actions challenging Tinubu's academic qualifications, which were discovered to be forged. The case of perjury, which has been hanging on his neck ever since then, is yet to be dispensed with, even as he can no longer hide under immunity clause as a governor. Being the questionable character he is said to be, the only response Tinubu could give to the premeditated Lagos House Assembly ad hoc committee set up to clear him of the perjury charge raised against him by Chief Farami in 1999 was to admit full responsibility for some of the, in quotes, needless errors, whatever that means. He told the convoluted story to the Kangaroo Committee that as a result of the acrimonious primaries of the Alliance for Democracy and the run-up for the election, the information contained in both the Independent National Electoral Commission form and the affidavit of loss of certificate were supplied by one of his political aides, Senator Tokumbo Afikuyomi. While the fraud spotted in the INEC form CF01 had exposed Tinubu as claiming that he attended St. Paul's Primary School, Aruloya, Lagos, for his primary school education, the ad hoc committee helped him adjust to the claim that he attended St. John's Primary School, Aruloya, Lagos. It was clearly a case of grand fraud applied to cover an initial fraud because all through the findings of the kangaroo committee, no mention was made of any testimony from any of Tinubu's classmates in the primary or secondary schools supporting his claims. One begins to wonder if Tinubu attended the school alone. In the INEC form CF01 to contest the 1999 election, Tinubu made a false claim that he attended Government College Ibadan. That detail was visibly omitted in 2003 when he ran for re-election. 
Hard as they try, the case has, however, refused to die, as questions are frequently being asked on what has happened. The irrepressible Senator Ogunlewe had asked then, unquote, Did Tinubu lie under oath that he attended St. Paul's Primary School, Arulaya, Lagos, which was not and is not in existence, Government College, Ibadan, and the University of Chicago? The inglorious role played by the Senate Assembly to aid and abet Tinubu in this grand deceit could only be compared to Emperor Nero playing his harp while Rome burnt. One begins to wonder the hold Tinubu has over the Assembly up to this present dispensation. Many years out of office, it is easily surmised with events that happened in 2007 after the inauguration of Fashola as governor of Lagos State. Never in history has any parliament adjourned his official proceedings and march to the private residence of a politician not holding public office to pledge the parliament unconditional allegiance to that politician. But that's exactly what happened in June 2007 immediately after the Lagos State Assembly was inaugurated by the new governor, Raji Fashala, when 99% of the state parliamentarians rushed to Bola Tinubu's private residence to pledge the Lagos Parliament allegiance to Bola Tinubu in his then private capacity, with the incumbent governor, Raji Fashala, merely looking on, having been pawned to remain in shock. Overlaying all of this is Bola Tinubu's absolute personal control of Lagos State government, Tinubu has turned Lagos into, in quotes, oceans of poverty containing islands of wealth. No wonder he still bears the appellation Governor General of Lagos, whatever that means. A look at history will do us all good if we were to understand the narcissistic nature of the man, Tinubu. Tinubu's tenure as Lagos State Governor ended on the 29th May 2007 and Babatunde Fashola of the Action Congress took office. Fashola had been chief of staff to Bola Tinubu and political godson of Ashiwaju Tinubu. In April 2007, the federal government brought Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu before the Code of Conduct Tribunal for trial over alleged illegal operation of separate foreign accounts. In 2009, the British Metropolitan Police were investigating a transaction in which the Tinubu-led Lagos state government made an investment in Econet, now Airtel. The federal government rejected a request by the Britain to release evidence needed for further investigation and persecution of the three Nigerian ex-governors in a London court. The perceived web of corruption allegedly created by Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu while in power is worrisome. Even after officially vacating office, by this, he effectively planted his cronies all over the machinery of governance and decision-making. Taxation is one of the means through which Tinubu has consistently enriched himself with the revenue of Lagos State. This has become not just a conduit of siphoning state fund, but a tapestry of a grand master plan of corruption by one man. By the end of the tenure of Bola Tinubu, the internal generated revenue was over 10 billion naira, and now, under the governorship of Batunde Fashola, the internal generated revenue in Lagos State is over 200 billion per annum. Revenue collection in Lagos State was contracted to a private consultant called Alpha Beta under Tinubu, and they still continue to collect revenue under the Fashola administration. But why was Alpha Beta selected as the preferred consultant? Did the government invite consultancy bids for the contract? How many consultancy companies submitted bids for the contract? Considering that Alpha Beta has no known track record of revenue collection, what were the criteria used in selecting Alpha Beta? Tinubu's alleged ownership of Alpha Beta Consulting might explain his strong defense of the tax company to the extent of reeling out Alphabeta's resume, even when not directly prompted. I'm interested in your relationship with Alphabeta. <laughs> it's just like my relationship with Julius Berger. <laughs> like any other company doing business for Lagos. And it is extremely, extremely 
important and efficient and we are building tunnel control from the ground up. They have expanded their knowledge in biometric institute <laughs> establishing and a control system and re-engineer the finances of Lagos. From 2000 to 2009, Alpha Beta allegedly took 15% of all tax resume generated by the state of Lagos. In the past five years, it has taken 10%, which means that Alpha Beta has pocketed approximately 13% of our money during the governorship of Tinubu and Fashola. This is ridiculously scandalous in itself. Approximately 1.464 trillion naira has been raised in tax in the past 15 years. Monies which should clearly be invested back into the state, but it is not. Alpha Beta is allegedly owned by Bola Ahmed Tunubu, and the company is the recurring decimal of corruption in Lagos. In the last two years, 36 billion naira has been paid out to Tunubu via Alpha Beta Consulting alone. 36 billion naira is a colossal amount of money to pay an individual firm over a two-year period. A look at taxation in Lagos, which is charged at multiple points, will suffice and help us to appreciate the maze of corruption that is perpetrated in Lagos by Tinubu and his cronies. In addition to federal taxes, the state government collects shops and kiosk rates, an approved open market levy, tenement rates, licensing fee for sale of liquor, slaughter slab license fee in abattoirs under local government control, marriage, birth and death registration fees, street naming registration fee, motor park levy including motorcycles and tricycles, parking fee on local government streets, roads, as many approved by the state government. Domestic animal license fee, excluding poultry farmers. License fees for bicycles, trucks, canoes, wheelbarrows, carts, other than a mechanical prepared truck. Radio and television license fee, excluding radio and television in motor vehicles, transmitters, and other communication equipment. Public convenience, sewage, and refuse disposal fees. Cemetery and burial ground permit fee. Permit fee for private entertainment and merit in public places, excluding road and streets. Wharf landing fees, corporate business permit, commercial business permit, commercial premises rate, corporate parking with company premises, vehicle radio permit and clearance, satellite mast permit, vehicle environmental protection, outdoor environmental sanitation agency fees, mobile advert permit, computer use permit, interstate revenue, penalty for seat belt default, computer license fee, etc., etc. It is better imagine how much sleaze that goes on behind the scene. Sensing a cover-up, a Lagos State resident, Dr. Ademola Dominic, petitioned the Lagos State government directly on the 24th of October 2012, asking for a disclosure of public accounts as pertain to the tax consultancy fee the Lagos State Government pays out monthly to a private company named Alpha Beta Consulting Limited, owned by Tinubu. Dr. Dominic, as a petitioner, invoked the Freedom of Information Act and demanded, unquote, to know how the taxes, revenue, and finances of the state occur are managed and disbursed in Lagos State and to access and request to be made available to me by you all information, certified true copies of files, records, contract agreements, documents in respect of the said contract agreement entered into between the government of Lagos State and the company Alpha Beta Consulting Limited, pursuant to section 233M, 05679 and 10 of the provisions of the Freedom of Information Act in 2011, FOI. According to Dr. Dominic's petition of accounts, unquote, the government of Lagos State boasts of internally generated revenue of about 40 billion naira every month, translating into a commission of 6 billion naira 
being paid to Alpha Beta Consulting Limited, also every month, which some I consider unfavorable and outrageous to me as a taxpayer and citizen of Lagos State. In the public eyes, the offending company Alpha Beta Consulting is putatively owned by Bola Ahmed Tunubu, who single-handedly picked Babatunde Fashola in 2007 as the Action Congress governorship candidate in Lagos by riding roughshod over the party's constitution requirement for a senatable primary election. And in the Lagos state government response of November 5, 2012, to the petitioner merely reinforces the state stance to treat Lagos state finances as personal funds. It is also on record that the Alpha Beta Company was blacklisted by the Abuja Environmental Protection Board for failing to render account of the fees it collects on behalf of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, in respect of solid and liquid waste bills from residents in the territory. The Stinibus firm was contracted in 2009 by the FCT administration under the then Minister Alhaji Amadu Alero to be responsible for waste management fees. The rest is history. As it is, Lagos' medium term future is in doubt, not least because its future taxes cannot be raised from the millions of illiterate and unskilled youth who would rather likely press violently for free social services to further tie up the state finances already hobbled over more than $500 million debt. In Lagos, land and real estate is gold. Here, Tinubu is believed to have effectively fleeced Lagos, allocating land for himself and his cronies. This area has been the gold mine for years and still remains one. It needs to be recalled that in 2007, a group called the Lagos Progressive Movement fingered Tinubu, a huge land scam running into several billions of naira in Lagos State. In a public statement on the matter, the group had noted Unquote. We, the Lagos Progressive Movement, once again wish to update the fellow Nigerians on the various land scams perpetrated by former Governor Bola Tinubu and being covered up by the Governor Babatunde Fashola. The facts are true and verifiable. We have gone further to quote real names and collaborators and addresses for properties for readers to verify themselves. Tinubu is the number one landlord in Lagos and has turned Lagos land worth trillions of naira into personal possessions to be used freely or given away unaccounted for. Even after he left office, Tinubu continues to illegally appropriate and allocate Lagos land under the watch of Fashola. Curiously, Tinubu still occasionally signs certificates of occupancy even as ex-governor and backdating them to the period he was in office. These brazen acts of corruption are alleged to have been perpetrated with the active collaboration of select few public officers who are obscenely wealthy at the expense of Lagos taxpayers. His accomplices in the frauds are Gwinga Ashafa, former permanent secretary Lance Berea since 2001 and seventh senator, Ms. Awofisayo, former permanent secretary and a relation of Bola Tinubu from Iragbiji, Ocean State. Hakim Murio Kunla, former personal assistant to Tinubu and now permanent secretary, Ministry of Land. Ms. Nike Animashaun, and Tunji Olowolafe, who was arrested by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, and detained for three days and later released following the allegations of financial impropriety. Here is a catalog of some few brazen acts of alleged corruption committed leveled by numerous quarters against Tinubu and supposedly aided by Fashola. It is believed that Tinubu's greed and primitive acquisition tendency knows no bounds. In fact, it is believed that Lagos land personally appropriated by him is worth over 500 billion naira, and this is growing because he hasn't stopped. This makes Tunubu Nigeria's single largest landlord. Number four, Onyikan Abayomi Drive, Ikoi, a five bedroom detached house on one acre of land and originally the Lagos State Governor's guest house since 1979, but which now belongs to Tunubu. The certificate of occupancy of the property, valued at 450 million naira, 
was signed and released to him by Fashola in 2007, shortly after he assumed office. Tinubu's residence at number 26 Bodinlon Road, Ikoi, valued at 600 million naira. The Lagos state government bought this property and paid an undisclosed sum to Tinubu, thereafter gave the property back to him under the bogus pension bill he signed to law shortly after he left office in 2007. The annex of the Lagos State Guest House in Asokoro, Abuja, was bought by the Lagos State Government in 2006 for 450 million naira. But shortly after Tinubu left office, the property was transferred to him under the pension plan he signed into law before leaving office. 250-acre land valued at 35 billion and strategically located at the Aja Junction on Lekki Road was initially meant for a general hospital for the people of Etiosa local government, but it was seized by Tinubu and handed over to Trojan Estate Limited, a company owned by Deji and Wale Tinubu, to develop as Royal Garden Housing Estate at the expense of the taxpayers of Lagos. The 1,000 hectares of land valued at about 75 billion naira at Lakowe near Abidjo in Igbeju Lekki local government and given to Lekki Concession and given to Lekki Concession Company LCC, which is partly owned by Tinubu, is now being developed as a golf course and housing estate by Assets and Resource Management Limited. A RM. 157 hectares of prime land with 2.5 kilometers on the Atlantic beachfront valued at about 10 billion naira and allegedly appropriated by Tinubu from the communities of Sirowon, Igbekodo, Akwakin in Igbejuleki and given to a Tinubu crony and front, Ibukun Fakeye, to build a golf course and luxury villa with little or no compensation to the villagers. Tinubu paid $20 billion at about 3 billion naira out of public treasury to Fakeye to commence the project in late 2006. Fashola has since released additional funding for this project, which is not owned by Lagos State Government. Bola Tinubu now owns the 14 hectare Parkview Ikoi Estate foreshore land reclaimed by Lagos State Government. While in office, he allocated to himself a former straw backyard beside the Lagos State Secretariat Alausa Ikeja. The property has now been developed into a shopping mall, the Ikeja City Mall, that houses ShopRite Ikeja. The choice property at Lekki Ekpe Road, on which he built the multi-million Naira Oriental Hotel and the multi-story car park beside it, in addition is the recreation center by Mobile in Oniro Estate on Lekki Ekpe Road, jointly owned with ARM and Tunji Olowolafe, and valued at over 25 billion naira, were obtained without paying a cobble to the Lagos state government. Tinubu Unders Fashola's watch sold the following prime Lagos properties to the personal friend and front, Prince Dikbo Eludoin, at very ridiculous prices. These include the 3.8 hectares of land of Lagos State Fisheries Office in VI, beside the Institute of Oceanography, valued at about 3 billion naira. The fishery landing jetty at Badore, valued at 500 million naira. The entire Ojodu foreshore scheme, initially enmarked for low cost housing scheme, valued at 5 billion naira. The Ilobiri Housing Estate, which used to house Lagos State civil servants and judges up to 2007, valued at 2.5 billion naira. The former Julius Bega Yard at Okinorinsa Ekpe, valued at 450 million naira. Tinubu raised a loan of 4.7 billion naira on Eko Akete project, for which nothing was achieved before he turned around to sell the property to his friends, Chagori and Chagori, and his own company, High Tech Construction Limited at the expense of the taxpayers of Lagos. Tinubu applied to personally purchase the Federal Secretarial Building while in office. When he could not buy it, he directed Fashola to stop the eventual owner of the complex to develop it. The complex is presently wasting away, courtesy of the Lagos State Government. It took several months of horse trading and underhand payment before Fashola could allow the new owners of the 1,004 flats to redevelop the complex. Tinubu converted all the plots of land where Lagos Polytechnic was located at Ikosi near the old toll gate. He chased away the Polytechnic in 2006, 
depriving the youth of Lagos of decent education because of his greed. He allocated the property to himself, his cronies, and political associates. It now houses TV Continental, TVC, which is also owned by Tinubu. Tinubu single-handedly sold the prime land on Bishop Aboyede Co, Victoria Island, which was recovered from some allotees to UACN Properties PLC. The amount of proceeds was shrouded in secrecy. Prince Dikbo Eludoin, fronting for Tinubu, built the estate directly opposite Goshen Beach Estate in Leki area in Lagos. Tinubu's wife, Remy Tinubu, built the massive New Era Foundation Youth Camp at the junction of Eloko, off the Leki Ekpe Express Road, with Lagos State Funds, and has now converted it to personal use. Tinubu owns the Farah Park Estate and the Beachwood Estate, both in Leki. The critical care unit at the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, Lasut, in Ikeja, was built and equipped with state funds and is now owned personally by Tinubu. He has put one Dr. Sikuru Tinubu, a supposed cousin of his, to run the outfit. Besides, prime land and properties have been used to pay off public officials who are personally close to Tinubu and Fashola for jobs well done or for being privy to sensitive information. Notably, Dele Alake, former commissioner of information and strategy, was sold a whole house on Alexandra Road, Ikoyi, where he lived as official quarters at a giveaway price. Rauf Arigbeshola, the Oshun state governor, who was former commissioner in Lagos, as well as Moise Banire, also former commissioner, got detached houses at Laduke Akintola Street, GRA, for their good job while serving under Tinubu. Yemi Kadoso and Wale Idun, both former commissioners, were also sold houses in Iru Close and another location in Old Ikoyi at giveaway prices by Tinubu. The list is endless. It won't be out of place to rename the Lekki Peninsula the Bola Tinubu Peninsula. Indeed, the prime land allegedly acquired from the Lekki Axis is enough to build the Lekki Express Road without burdening residents and other taxpayers with the 30-year concession toll road. One wonders why the EFCC appears compromised on matters concerning Tunubu. If not, how come has he not been charged to court despite several petitions against him and in spite of Nuhu Ribadu's boastful claims that he had enough evidence to nail him? One of the governors, we think, he took close to about 75% of the resources of the state. One governor took 75% of the money yeah. from the state government? And this is a state that is probably made over a billion dollars in terms of revenue. Or was it the reason he gave his ACN presidential ticket to Ribado in 2011? It is apparent that there is a deliberate attempt at cover-up of all these alleged nefarious activities by just this one man, Tinubu. One can remember with nostalgia Tinubu's case at the Code of Conduct, but like a cat with nine lives, he still evades justice. The case against him was simple and grievous for any government official, not to talk of a governor. Unquote, that you, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, former governor of Lagos, being a public officer as listed in Part 2 of the 5th Schedule of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and having subscribed to the oath of office as enshrined in the 7th Schedule in the 99 Constitution on Assumption in Office, as such, engage yourself in the operation and maintenance of several foreign bank accounts, namely First Heritage Bank USA, Citibank NA New York, Citibank International New York, HSBC 177 Great Portland Street, London, amongst others. However, in what many have come to accept as a political deal for delivering the Southwest to the ruling PDP, the federal government let Tinubu off the hook and the matter was thrown out of the tribunal on technical grounds. But for how long can Tinubu evade justice? It will be interesting to follow up on what has happened to the EFCC intervention in the case of allegation of fraud leveled against Governor Fashola by a body named as the True Face of Lagos, which led to the arrest, detention, and eventual release of one Dr. Tunji Oluwulafe, a prominent contractor and friend of both Tinubu and Fashola. He was arrested in Lagos by the operatives of EFCC following its investigation into allegations of financial crimes. 
Oluwo Lafe, a medical doctor and owner of Dox Projects Limited, whose company was used as a front by the Lagos State Governor to execute inflated contracts, was arrested on Friday, April 23, 2010, after investigators discovered that 27 contracts were awarded to the company from the State Ministry of Health and three from the Ministry of Education. Dr. Tunji Oluwolafe was allegedly paid 10 billion naira from Lagos State coffers as a front for Tinubu. In the last 10 years, tax revenue has come to constitute about 75% of government revenue based. Yet the government never bothers to render account to taxpayers in Lagos. In the last three years alone, a colossal sum of 1.1 trillion was budgeted by Lagos State government with the government itself affirming that it has consistently recorded a minimum of 75% of budget performance, out of which 80% came from the internally generated revenue, IGR. This is 30% more than the entire budget recorded by successive governments between 1992 and 2007, a period spanning of 15 years. The total tax revenue of last year, as at the time of making revelations, showed that tax on a monthly basis hovered between 14 billion and 17 billion, while federal allocations stood at 6 billion monthly. This is more than the revenue of seven states in Nigeria put together on a monthly basis. Lagosians, it is time to break from the stranglehold of this one man. Tinubu's godfatherism is more akin to that of the unscrupulous mafia dons in Sicily. It is more of gangsterism. Tinubu's gangster godfatherism means candidates for public office of his political parties are not elected by popular vote, but selected from Tinubu's bedroom in Bodilon Road and then imposed on the party. They are then held under a tight leash by the Jagoban and are required to do his bidding or pain of being summarily replaced or impeached. B.C. Akonde, former chairman of Tinubu's legacy ACN party, declared unapologetically that democracy had no place in the internal arrangement of the then ACN. Unquote, anyone that is not comfortable with that should go and contest in another political party. Unquote. Nothing has really changed in this stance beyond the fact that ACN has since metamorphosed into the APC. The first test was the so-called election of the chairman of the party. Instead of electing a new APC chairman, Odige Oyegun was allegedly rigged into office by Tinubu. Tom Ikimi blew the whistle on Tinubu, insisting that he never dropped out of the race for Oyegun, but was forced out because at that time, Tinubu had designs of Muslim Muslim APC presidential ticket, with him as a vice president candidate. Ali Modu Sharif was even reported to have been so incensed by Tinubu at the APC National Executive Committee meeting that he threatened to beat Tinubu up. Both of these men have since left the APC. The charade in the selection of a governorship candidate of Lagos was no different. A tiger never really changes its stripes. It was a rehash of the primaries that brought in Fashola in 2007. Tinubu simply masterminded the primaries. Once the results started to be declared, the other contestants realized that they had been conned. They all stormed out of the venue in protest, leaving only Ambode and Ganyu Solomon. Tinubu pleaded with the aspirants to accept the contrived outcome, saying, unquote, You are 12 aspirants, and like the 12 tribes of Israel, you have some differences, but you must remain one and united. Unquote. It is ironic to point out that the 12 tribes of Israel were not united. Instead, they split, with two tribes becoming the kingdom of Judah and the remaining 10 the kingdom of Israel, a house divided against itself cannot stand. Maybe it will not be out of place to remind the Ashiwaju of history repeating itself in the next election in Lagos. In 1991, the Social Democratic Party won an overwhelming 26 out of the 30 seats in the House of Assembly election. However, it lost the election of governor to the National Republican Convention, and Sir Michael Otedola became governor of Lagos as a result of conflict and split within the SDP.
The evidence suggests that no thanks to Tunibu's hijinks, history might repeat itself in 2015 with the probable loss of Lagos by the ruling party APC to the opposition party PDP. It has to be stressed that even Tinubu and Fashola have had their own share of quarrels in the sharing of their spoils. The arrest of Oluola Fair was said to be the climax of the bitter feud between Tinubu and his godson over certain fundamental issues, chief among which is the control of the finances of the state. In December 2009, there were reports that Babatunde Fashola and Paula Tinubu had fallen out over the issue of whether Fashola to run for re-election in 2011, and Tinubu said to be supporting the Commissioner of Environment, Moise Banere. Fashola's nemesis, as it were, was his complaint about the huge monthly deductions of over $3 billion from the state coffers every month as consultancy fee by Tinubu's tax company, Alphabeta, from the almost $30 billion internal generated revenue. This day newspaper, December 19, 2009, in one of his articles, sums it up that Tunji Oluwola Fair is a corny and a convenient front for Tinubu, unquote. Sources claim that Tinubu's role in installing Fashola as governor of Lagos State is the biggest hindrance for the present regime. An agreement between Fashola and Tinubu over the duration of the tenure of governorship as well as the selection of certain cabinet members paints a vivid picture on the sort of bind Fashola is in. And this bind will continue in the present governorship aspirant, Ambody, if he is allowed to win the next election in Lagos. And Perotinubu knows how to keep his acolyte under check. For those who might want to claim Ambody might be a man of his own, but not under Tinubu. Governor Fashola still remains a case study for the alleged deviousness of Bola Ahmed Tunubu. There is the multi-billion Naira Badagri Mal 210 lane highway built by Julius Beggar and the Lekki Express Highway which Tunubu arm twisted Fashola and ensured he got a 30-year concession to build, operate and transfer. For those who know the Lion of Bodolon, it was all about the influence of Tunubu. He wants to run the government. He was angry Fashola wouldn't let him. He wanted the Badagri Mount 2 contract, but when Fashola gave it to Julius Beggar, because Tinubu had the Lekki Ekwe deal, Tinubu got angry. It is believed that this one man, Tinubu, gets all he desires, and he is still not yet done. The alleged ownership of choice properties and businesses by the former Lagos State Governor, Mr. Bola Ahmed Tinubu, valued at over 1 trillion naira, will rank him the most corrupt, prone politician in Nigeria. Such properties and businesses include the Ikeja Shopping Mall, Oriental Hotels, Renaissance Hotels, First Nation Airline, Vintage Publication, Publishers of Nation Newspaper, TV Continental, Radio Continental, and so many others. On the celebration of his 60th birthday, it was said that he forced some APC, ACN, then state governors and the 57 chairmen of local government councils and the local council development areas of Lagos State to cough out 2 billion naira for the event. Though yet to be listed in the authoritative Forbes Fortune 100 list, Tinubu is arguably Nigerians' biggest landlord. His ownership of choice real estate and swath of land running into thousands of acres of public land is second only to the federal government and the Lagos state government. But in terms of direct cash value and return on investment, Tinubu's real estate holding may be worth more than even that of the federal government in Lagos state. Let's pause a minute and ask ourselves how a man who was governor for eight years with fixed salary and allowances could have acquired so much money to buy almost everything in Lagos. Unknown to Nigerians, in 1993, six years before he ran for his first term in office in 1999, Tinubu was charged in the United States of America for narcotics or drug trafficking. Charged before the United States District Court, Northern District of Illinois in a judgment that was docted and dated 5th October 1993. The United States government compelled Tinubu to forfeit all sums in nine different accounts 
in First Heritage Bank, Citibank NA, and Citibank International. In the document titled Decree of Forfeiture as to Funds Held in First Heritage Bank, it states clearly in the Article A that, unquote, the United States filed a verified complaint for the forfeiture against funds in the above captioned defendant Tinobu's account because there was probable cause to believe that the property presented proceeds of narcotics trafficking or was property involved in the financial transactions in violation of 16 USC SS 1956 and 1957 and therefore was forfeitable to the United States, unquote. It is alleged that Tinubu might have escaped physical time in prison but entering into a plea bargain and thus forfeited all funds in his account, which were suspected to have been proceeds from narcotics or drugs to the United States court. Evidently, there is a lot more to Tinubu's dark past that millions of Nigerians are yet to unravel. Yes, there is housing scheme being built within the eco-Atlantic city development, which is marketed as a brand new city that excludes the hard-working people of Lagos, a brand new city where many plots of land cost in excess of a million dollars. A brand new city in which 120,000 will live and 250,000 will work, while millions of Lagosians will remain trapped in abject poverty. The Eco Atlantic City project is reclaiming the ocean. Sadly, it is just pandering to the stereotype painted by the United Nations oceans of poverty containing islands of wealth. It so happens that this particular island is being built with an ocean of wealth by an ocean that is flooding the accommodation of millions of less wealthy people all across Lagos. Where are the new houses and improved infrastructure in Mushin, Ali Mosho, and Ajeromi Ifelodun? Or are they not part of Lagos? From the foregoing, there is no doubt that the regime of corruption in Lagos, initiated and perpetrated by Emperor Tinubu, and continued by his godson Fashola and to be continued by Ambode if he wins, has put the southwestern state in a serious deficit. Tinubu and his acolytes has put millions of Lagosians today and even children yet to be born into slavery of debt. May God bless Nigeria and God bless Lagos State. If I delay you, you could still punish me. If I punish me.